Hi there. Uh, being the uh, professional production that this is, we ran out of battery yesterday, so uh, um, we didn't get to complete um, our outing. Um, but okay, I did save all the all the uh, wild vegetables and edibles that we collected um, yesterday uh, during our trip, so that I can show you what I'm going to do with them. Um, really simple. Um, the simplest way to uh, cook um, in the outdoors with wild ed edibles is just to make a, a big stew out of it. Okay. Um, I use a uh, I use a jet boil. Um, this is. Uh, um, a very good product. It's kind of expensive. It usually costs around $100, um, but yeah, it goes with me everywhere I go, especially in my backpack and uh, everything from mountain house meals to wild vegetables to teas to even making coffee. Um, it's the perfect little compact uh, cooking system um, for what I do anyway. Um, other people might uh, like different systems, um, and it doesn't work so well when it's uh, um, in very cold climates because of the, uh, the, pr the pressure differences in the, in the canister. Um, but if you sleep it with it around your toes or you warm it up a little bit, you can usually get it to work. Anyway, um, I'm going to pour this in here. I'm just going to get a little water. I'm going to get a couple shots of it uh, cooking and then we're going to call it a day. So here we go. You can see it, everything's cooking up quite nicely. Um, uh, it smells uh, really nice, like a pot full of greens and uh, the water's turning a nice greenish color there. Um, I will be drinking that as a tea as well. Um, just a quick note. Um, when you are uh, identifying your plants and uh, you're going through the process using field guides and learning, um, make sure that every time you, you go pick from a new plant, you, um, even if you properly identified the one before, um, that you don't just start walking around and picking up the picking up the, the different greens just because you've identified the plant in the general area. Um, yesterday, when I was picking the plantain, um, I I must have picked up another kind of a plant. Um, it looks exactly like the plantain. Um, has a little bit of a fuzz in it. It might, it might actually even be a, a, a species of plantain. Um, but I went ahead and tasted it um, after I started cooking it and then I realized that it tasted a lot different than what I was used to. Um, so luckily I caught that and I, I pulled it out of all the water and stuff before it started cooking. Um, but it just goes to show you be very careful and make sure you re-identify um, each new plant that you go to. Um, and then also, after you're done cooking, make sure you re-inspect it. Um, I always do a, a, another inspection of all the, all the plants and I make sure I can identify it in every single step when you first get to it. Um, and then uh, obviously I didn't re-identify it each, each additional time after that, but that'll make sure that'll happen in the future. And then also make sure you can re-identify uh, um, the leaves exactly what they are after you've already cooked it. Um, take a quick inspection, make sure you know what everything is. Um, just to stay on the safe side and not mix any extra plants um, that shouldn't be there. Um, in your stew. Um, so we will, uh, yeah. The greens are finished. They're nice and soft and uh, they're starting to turn the proper colors. Um, when I say proper colors, I just usually mean there's a little bit of a color change, especially from uh, um, the, the curled dock um, that we have in here. Um, usually the other ones will stay pretty green. Um, I am going to go ahead and let it simmer while I eat it because I'd like to leave the cattail root in there a little bit longer just to make sure it gets a chance to soften up. Um, remember what I said, um, always reinspect before you eat is to make sure you know exactly what you're putting in your mouth. Okay, um, Right here we have some of the cattail shoots. These do not need to be cooked. Um, you can eat these raw and they're actually very tasty raw. Um, but I just decided to cook it up with everything else today. It's excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. The tastes, taste something like a, a, a spinach or any kind of other green that you might boil. Um, some might call it bland. Um, but I don't. I think it's very tasty. Uh, that's a uh, that's curled dock right there. This would be our milk thistle right there. Hmm, that is great. And the spines. Uh, Spines are all gone, they're nice and soft. You can eat it just with everything else, just like it should be. Like I mentioned before, in the older plants of the milk thistle, um, the spines won't turn as soft. Now this right here was it's kind of curious. This is a uh, milk thistle, but for some reason, yo, that's hot. For some reason, one of the, uh, the leaves turned like a purplish black, but it's just one of the leaves on the plant. Um, so I am not going to be eating that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I do a pre another inspection because I don't know why it's turning black. It might not be anything. Um, it could just be something a normal part of the process. But why wouldn't the other leaves also turn black? Um, so I won't be eating that at all. But everything else seems to be in order. Let's get some of that miner's lettuce in there. Miner's lettuce, and when you cook it up, it becomes a really good noodley consistency. Um, it's almost like a green noodle, um, and it's. 
It's uh, pretty tasty, um, and I've actually taken taken this stuff, not the healthiest way to do it, but I've taken a, a stew like this with the miner's lettuce and some other edibles, and you throw in a bunch of t top ramen seasoning, and it's almost like having a wild top ramen. Um, so if you're out in the wilderness or whatever, and you don't uh, um, necessarily want to carry around a bunch of different spices, just carry one of those, um, or a couple packages of those outside of the top ramen packet, and there you have instant top ramen or instant uh, green noodles wherever you go. Mm. Like I mentioned before, um, you might want to throw some salts or some butter um, in with the greens if you prefer that. Um, personally, I like the way it tastes by itself, um, but it also tastes the other way. But if you put garlic and butter and salt on anything, it'll taste good. You can put it on a, a dry piece of wood and you can probably make it taste good. Um, so I prefer the, uh, the natural tastes. Anyway, there we go. Um, I am going to try to get piece of the cattail root out. There we go. There's a smaller one. Now, these guys, in all the field guides and manuals, they say you, you can eat it like a potato. Um, not really. <laughs> um, cattail root has a lot of stringy fibers in it. Um, they're very tough fibers. Um, so really what you want to do is you want to chew it. Um, chew the fibers and use your saliva to kind of mix in with it, and then you can actually squeeze all the starches out. Um, and it actually tastes pretty good. Um, when you do that, but then you're gonna then you're gonna want to spit out the fibers. You could probably swallow the fibers and be all right, um, but I prefer not to. Um, and I actually have uh, taken the large amounts of cattail root fibers that I've chewed the starch out of, uh, let it dry, and turned it into a very very decent cordage material. Um, not not anything like a rope or anything like that, but just enough to maybe to set up a Paiute deadfall or um, have some basic cordage around. Um, it's too much work to try to pull that pull cattail roots out in it uh, just for. Uh, the cordage, um, but if you're going to eat a large, uh, large amount of them, or you have a good, uh, you know, helping amongst several people, um, you might have enough to kind of make some extra cordage. Mm. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, that actually part of the cow tote right there didn't have as many of those fibers, but you can kind of see them. Here, I'll get a little closer. You can kind of see the fibers on the sides there, and they're pretty tough. But I'm gonna eat it. It's great. Mm. You can see how the fibers are. I'm just gonna put that in my mouth, chew it around a little bit, suck out all that white starch there, and uh, spit the rest out. Mm. Now you can see, Right here, this fibery material is very, 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 very tough. Um, you can you can roll that together, if, especially if it even has a little bit of the extra starch left into it, um, and it'll make a nice um, waxy um, like cordage um, with a lot of it. Um, I've actually made some uh, enough cordage for a pie deadfall one time, just eating some um, some cattails, um, so I was able to get more out of use. I did want to get a shot of the uh, the finished vegetables, um, so you can see right there. Um, there's cattail shoots in there, there's uh, some of the plantain, um, some of the uh, milk thistle um, that's all in there. Um, on the bottom there we have our cattail root, it's a little hot, it's kind of tough to get it out with the spork. But there it is right there. Um, we can chew that guy up nicely and get uh, lots and lots of starch. Or if I wanted to crush it and get the starch out in the water um, to add to a stew or so, um, I could. Um, I have even heard of people making uh, cattail pancakes out of the starches. I haven't done that yet, um, but maybe that'll be uh, part of a future segment. But anyway, I want to thank you for uh, watching my video. I hope you learned something, um, and uh, there will be more. Um, there's many uh, wild edibles that I didn't get a chance to, to get to, um, and the different ways of preparing them. Um, we're also going to be doing some stuff in the high Sierra as the uh, summer goes, goes on. Anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, um, enjoy your outdoors.